morning everyone um it is wednesday today and this is really quite an exciting vlog that didn't make much sense this is, might be a long one so you might want to get a cup of tea i feel like i've not done an introduction for a while so if any of you are new here and have just found me by some random hole you've fallen down in the internet my name is sophie callahan i am a specialist equine portrait photographer in the uk um, and a country lifestyle blogger so what that means is that i travel the uk photographing horses and their humans mostly um, I also work a lot with small equestrian and rural businesses, um, taking photographs to strengthen their online brand um, and for them to use for marketing purposes and that kind of thing. So that's another part of my job. And then as a sideline, I also am a country lifestyle blogger. So I blog and I vlog about anything to do with country lifestyle, basically, clues in the title. <laughs> so kind of country fashion, like house and home, where to eat, local places that I like to visit, equestrian days out, so horse shows, like the game fair I did last year, anything like that. So that's just a bit about me, just in case you're new here. But this vlog is going to be a good one. So today is Wednesday, I'm off to Hadlow College to meet and interview Monty Roberts and to watch his demo, which I'm so excited about. Um, I was invited by Intelligent Horsemanship and Kelly Marks to come down this afternoon and chat to Monty and I think I might be able to chat to Kelly as well. So yeah, I thought that'd be a really fun vlog. Also later this week on Friday I have a collaborative commercial shoot with various brands and small businesses which I'll chat to you more about them because that's quite a long story. There's a lot going on on Friday. The other thing is if you have watched my vlogs a few weeks ago we announced that we're moving house next month so we really really need to start packing some boxes and getting stuff in boxes for moving house because at the moment I've done just about nothing <laughs> um, and I'm starting to panic slightly. We do, we went and bought some boxes, so that's a good start. We just haven't put anything in them yet. So really need to get some of that done. March is gonna be a busy month. A couple of other things I've got coming up as well in the next few vlogs, which should be really, really fun. So I'm looking forward to it. Just arrived. Say hello. Look at Hi. you looking out Sorry. the window. <laughs> I was watching the um, we've just arrived at Hadlow College and I don't really know where we've got to go. Got to go and find Monty, I guess. <laughs> Why is that funny? I don't know. It just is. <laughs> Does Monty know what's coming? No, no idea. So we just got into the arena and Monty is just over there. We've had a little chat and he's just about to assess the horses um, that he's going to work with this afternoon or this evening. And there's all sorts of um, information and details on this bit of paper that kind of tells them what the issues are. <laughs> they were saying they have to check to make sure the horses are sound and everything, didn't they? Yeah. I and I think just so that Monty kind of understands what he's going in there with. <laughs> Very exciting. So we just had a chat with Kelly Marks, who was telling us that they bring the horses in here, yeah, to check that they're not lame, and then they, um, what was I going to say? What was she just telling us? Just assess them, they're like, um, how quiet oh, they so, are. Yeah, and there's seven, so they're going to use five out of the seven, so, which means two will be sent home. If they're lame, then they can't work with them, but um, if they're too quiet, then they can't work with them, but they will, the ones that they can't work with, because obviously they've made the effort to get their horses here, they will try and work with them in the afternoon and at least send them away with something. Um, which is really nice um, yeah basically Monty over there is just checking them all out checking that they, he can do something with them that they're not lame that there's nothing wrong with them that they um, are okay in this environment that they're okay with um, they were just checking a minute ago that that horse is okay with the lunge line behind it just all the things that he um, is planning to do with them I guess so yeah really interesting Got the second pony in there Minty. What was the first one called? Rhea. Yeah. <laughs> so this pony is scared of the clippers. Oh, I turned the camera on too long. He just turned the clippers on and the pony just bolted across the ring. So you can confirm. 
it is scared of clippers. <laughs> This is Molly and she's difficult to mount. Oh, this is progress. They've not been able to get near her. This is Bobby. They just got the mountain block out to try and see what he thinks. Not a fan. He says no thank you. This is Acorn. He's a bad loader, apparently. Is he not the cutest little thing you've ever seen, though? I love him. He's an Ardennes cross, apparently. Not sure about this experience. And this last pony is Jack. And he is also a bad loader, apparently. He moves nicely though. Yeah, so Monty's just going to chat to the owners and tell them who they're using um, and what they found and everything. So, can we film a bit of that? Okay, so I think we've got a good group of horses and we should have a good group of horses. Demonstrations. Lacking that, it's my fault. We have to do it. And the first horse to come in the ring comes in for the members, and um, that's Minty or Monty, whatever his name is. It's going to get changed up as well. His passport says Monty, and his uh, stable name is Minty. But um, that one is interesting, really interesting. I can read what's happened to that horse with the clippers as well. I'm, I'm telling you, Ray Charles could read it. <laughs> and they have, they have attempted to clip the horse. And he didn't want it. The sound of the clippers was strange. He jumped away from, those, from that sound, resisted it. And then they have put a twitch on him. They twist his ear down. They've done several things. You can see it all in his little actions. It's my opinion that you can get a horse used to anything on the face of this earth. If they just see it enough times and it doesn't cause them pain. If it causes them pain, they will continue to resist it. But when you go to India and you watch these horses in the brickyard, or you go to Brazil and watch the horses going into the mountains, into those little caves and pulling a, a little train to pull the uh, stones they bring out of the mountain. It's unbelievable what they get them to do. And uh, the things, the sounds, the things that horses go through that ride on jet airplanes and stuff like that, it's, it's incredible. So if that horse had more time, that's yours, isn't it? Yeah. And had more time to have a radio in the stable and then first put no station at all, and just a little static shh kind of thing, and then volume up, it helps. And then uh, the first horse to come in about 7.40 uh, will be the only starter we have, which is Ray. And um, she's, she's a handful. There you go. Rhea is, is going to be a handful. She's a flighty little Arab with nerves right at the surface of her skin. and um, she'll, she'll be a challenge, but she's normal. So if she's normal, then I should be able to do what I say I can do with a normal horse. Right after Rhea will come in the number, we call it the number two horse, which is Bobby. 
And Bobby is the big gray horse that's the mount. That's yours. And uh, with the tack on, he's almost impossible because he doesn't allow the mounting block to be next to him with the tack on. And here we go again. He doesn't allow the mounting block. What happened that a horse doesn't like a mounting block? What is a mounting block? Is? Well, I'll tell you the horse says. They bring that mounting block. And then they get up there, and they go to get on me, and they put their foot in the stirrup, and the saddle hurts when it twists, and they step away, and then somebody gives me a crack for stepping away, and I'm not saying that you did. And how long have you had? 10 years, and he's 16. So this may not be the only person involved with him, but he believes that when the mounting block comes there, things start to happen that he doesn't like. And what we want to do is turn that around and have things happen when the mounting block goes down. But he does, as some of you may have been on Joe's uh, Facebook, to see this Mustang that I had in California this last month. And it was 16 or 17 sessions of averaging maybe 30 minutes per session, yeah. something like that. <coughs> he was utterly white. And there's no way that you can convince me that I was even rational in allowing you to do this with this Mustang that was very dangerous, the wildest and most dangerous Mustang ever had. And, and, and he would not only come to the mountain block, but he would back between two barrels that she was standing, one foot on one side, one foot on the other, and he would back between her feet like that, and then allow her to sit in the saddle and go off with nothing on his head. If anyone hasn't seen it, it's on Kelly's Facebook yes, page yes. as well. I've only been in the horse business for 80 years. <laughs> I showed my first horse when I was four and I'll be 83 in May. So, 80 years I've been in the horse business. <laughs> Following Bobby and after the interval comes Molly. And Molly is utterly petrified of plastic on a stick or the tarpaulin on the floor and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, we call it the lake and stream demonstration. Uh, we're going to do that with Molly. There's a lot of things that Molly needs, other than that, in my opinion. But we can only do so much tonight. We have two loaders at the very end. So we're going to try to get you set up so that you know you can load. It may not be always be the most may not just walk straight out, but I promise you that if I had those two horses, they would be walking straight off. You could turn them loose and they'd go get in the train themselves. I swear. All right, any questions? Well, we did about me too. We've just got Monty quickly to just have a couple of questions just before we do the demo tonight. Thank you so much for having 10 minutes with us. You're welcome. We're just borrowing this pony. Um, so just a couple of questions that my audience have asked. Um, the first one is, when did you realise that the connection you have with horses is so special? When did that happen? You know, in actual fact, I've never known it not that way. Okay. Um, because I showed my first horse in competition when I was four, and I literally remember showing my first horse, and I won the competition. But it was a weird one, because I was riding eight or nine hours a day, and I had a special connection with horses. And from a child's viewpoint, as a four-year-old, I thought everybody in the world yeah. had a special connection yeah. with horses. Um, I never knew the difference, so I can't really answer the question as to when, because it was eternal. It yeah. was, I was born with it. Um, that is your answer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that everybody isn't born with it. They just don't get to experience it like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice way to look at things. Um, so, with that, what's the most important lesson that a horse has ever taught you? That violence is never the answer. That no one of us was born with the right to say you must or I'll hurt you to any other creature, animal or human. I don't think any of us have that right. Um, if you stop and think about it, there are laws against that, you know, sort of thing. You do what I tell you to or I'll hurt you. You can think of all the ways that people would use that for their own gain, yeah, for their own interest, whatever. 
It's against the law. Yeah. Yeah. And it should be against the law, in my opinion, for horses too. Yeah. And all animals. Um, yeah, there's no violence in uh, self-defense. If a horse is going to yeah. try to kill you, and you bash him on the nose to keep <laughs> him from killing you, you know, that's okay. Yeah. But to, to issue the order with the whip to, to back it up is wrong. It's got to be wrong. And the uh, horses will tell you so. And the horse that wants to do it will give you the better performance yeah, every cool. time. Yeah. So, so, better to do it that okay, way. Okay, I love that. Um, so, how do you think that the connection between the horse and the rider impacts on success or effectiveness of the rider um, in top competition or in low level competition? Yeah, that, that's a little bit like saying, you know, is the rowing crew best? when they're in absolute unison with one another, in unison with one another? Or are they best when each one is just trying to do his yeah. strongest? No, they are not at their best when each one is trying to do their strongest, best act. Yeah, cool. It's in unison. So if horse and rider, or horse and human, for anything, maybe not even ridden, mm -hmm. um, if they are in a... In a symbiotic relationship, a relationship that's in unison with one another, they're far more effective in everything, anything they want to do, yeah. they're more effective. So with that, what is the best way to bond with your horse? If you've just got a new horse or if you're having problems and you just want to bond with them and um, improve your connection? Well, the, the discovery I made with join up is exactly that. Mm -hmm. And so if I made that discovery and it works for me every time, I would have to say that's yeah, the cool. best way to come together. Um, there, there are a lot of ways. Sitting down with yourself and saying, I give up any right to be violent. Mm -hmm. That's a way of coming together with your horse yeah. because they're a flight animal. And for instance, whips in racing. It's the stupidest thing man has ever done. Yeah. <laughs> they literally, now they have these radar guns where they know how fast the horse is going. And they literally run slower when they're whipped. Oh, really? Furthermore, 70% of the accidents in racing occur when the whips come out. Mm -hmm. Because horses are dodging around to get away from them and they hit one another and they fall over and jockeys get killed and get injured. Often from that sort of thing. Whatever possess us to make the decision that it's okay to whip the horse that's running as fast as he can. Yeah. And when you stop to think about a coach that might have a foot runner in the Olympics, and you say, well, I don't think he's given you quite enough in the last hundred <laughs> meters. We'll just go along and whip him. <laughs> yeah, no, you wouldn't, would you? <laughs> well, they'd arrest you. No, yeah. So it's, it's really kind of silly, but humans do a lot of silly things. So are you kind of saying in that case, everything that we apply to our relationships with humans, it you know, works to apply the same kind of thought to horses? You can say that Passion. providing that you agree with all the things I say well, we should I mean, do with yeah. the Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, so what we do to one another is yeah. sometimes yeah. just as bad as what we're doing with the horses. So yeah. we have to be fair with one another unfair with our horses, mm -hmm. dogs, cats, I mean, just makes sense, the squirrel. It? When you uh, say it like that. Yeah, yeah. If we want a symbiotic relationship with nature and with this earth of ours, mm -hmm. then we have to be symbiotic yeah. with each of these other individuals. We can't say, I can make my horse do anything I want it to do. Yeah, you probably can. Not as well as you can yeah. if you do it another way. But uh, yeah, and there's no cool points for that, is there? Uh, much cooler to have them want to work with you. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know? I bet. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm I'm changing in nine, in two thousand and eighteen I'm changing my whole delivery to my audience to the point of the fact that we cannot just simply force horses to do it. A good trainer can make his horse do almost anything he wants him to do. But the great trainer can cause the horse to want to, to, want do, to do it. it. Yeah. And I want the audience to tell me, when is this horse telling me he wants to do it? Yeah. And then we go to the next step. So incrementally moving up 
through these a roadmap of incremental updates to get where we want to go uh, is the answer to these things and uh, I'm going to try to do it with each of the courses tonight. Lovely. Well, I think that's a really good end. Thank you so much for thank allowing you. us to chat. I'm sure my audience are going to love that. I think they're going to be really inspired by that. So thank you so good. much. Hope to see you thank again you. sometime. <laughs> well, it's a lovely downward light we've got going on there. We are over here by all the camera stuff. So hang on, let me show you where we're sat. That was a right bug shot of me. Sorry. <laughs> so that's the audience over there. This is the, the private audience. Yeah, it's just so literally just me and her over here. No, I didn't mean this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> didn't we have the private audience? Um, this is the yeah, membership. So, yeah, the yeah, first of all, we've got the private audience, which is like just the members of Intelligent Horsemanship um, and us. And then, so they're going to do, I think, two ponies for that? Is it? Or no, just, just one. one? And then the rest of them, um, they'll let the big audience in. And then they'll do the other four there is, isn't it? Because they said they were only going to do five. But they've actually picked six. Yeah, because they're doing the only one Only one's gone home. Clippers on, I think. I think they might be in her pocket. tested him with the clippers and he didn't run away. Okay, 
compared to his reaction this morning. I think that was pretty good. Well done, Minty. So Kelly has done her bit for the Intelligent Horsemanship members and um, we're just sitting waiting as like an interval. I think the interval's over. I'm just going to tell you it's freezing. But I'm very excited.
She doesn't know what the sound is. She's never seen one before.
I'll put him straight up into the side. I'll just put him up here first, then I'll put him straight in the side, and on the coast. Morning again um, it's Friday today and I have a collaborative shoot today with six brands I think it was supposed to be seven but one didn't turn up so I think we've got six I think that's right so basically I put out a little um, status on Facebook in one of the groups that I'm in small and supercharged which is full of equine and country businesses and arranged for one day and loads of different brands to send me their products so that we could keep costs down and photograph them all in one place all at the same time so that some brands who perhaps couldn't afford an entire shoot for themselves would have the chance to get some professional images to kind of kickstart their business online or like if they just had a couple of new products out and they just wanted photos of those um, anything like that really so it's been really successful this is the first one so I wanted to kind of keep numbers low for the minute so that I could assess how we how it goes and then hopefully I'll be organizing a lot more of these in the future so we've got six brands that we're working with today I'm going to tell you about them as we go along I think rather than all now and show you all the products and talk to you about each of the businesses so yeah, I'm really excited. We're off to Suffolk today to do that. This is what we're currently dealing with in my front room. I mean, not that guitar, that's my brother's and I'm not really sure why that's here or when he's picking it up. That's not coming with this, but yeah, all these boxes. Um, there's some more down there. Um, yeah, so we've got to take all these to Suffolk. Just getting all my camera stuff ready. Just pick this one up. <laughs> and we have a car full of goodies and equisages. <laughs> so we've got these first. These are the Scoops, spelled S-K-U-P, from Huff. And they're very cool, look, they've got these teeth to break up feed and all sorts. So we've got those over there. And that's been scooping feed. <laughs> it's made a lot easier. <laughs> so this is our second little set of goodies. We've got, oh, Horseshoe hearts and gifts. Look, these are beautiful. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and steal one of these for my new house. Look. So Pardon? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> and then this one's a hoof pick, which is very cool. And then there's one more of these. Oh, hang on. Oh, everything's falling out. Yeah. This one is like a little ornament for your house. Look at that. I love it. And then, yeah, there's one more of these which we're going to do in the house a bit later, so I'll show you that then. The links to all of these are down in the description, by the way. Right, we've done the My Whole Horse Box bit now. So this is the, um, what is it? Relaxation and rest or something? Should I have another look? Yeah, we'll go and get the, we'll go and get the thing. Relax and rejuvenate, there we go. And it was something about relaxing. So we've got a candle. There was a spillage in the post. Um, so just ignore the fact that it's wet. <laughs> but we've got a uh, Karma. Um, what is that? Valerian Cordial. What is that? Do we know? I'm going to have a read. Ride a Rescue for Your Hands, which smells really good. And then some, some Equine Massage Oil. Oh, okay. So the Cordial is like a feed supplement. Hmm, there we go. Look at all. It's mm. a bit grubby. Do your hands smell? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> huh? How am I supposed to shoot? I don't know. I love shoots when they get me food. <laughs> this is definitely not on my low carb plan though. We just had a break, by the way. <laughs> so our next 
um, project is a worm kit, worming kit. Yeah. And guess who gets the honours? Me and Leah are about to get seriously well acquainted. <laughs> Ready? Gonna this, gonna this, it says the fresher the better on, with I the poo. I don't see why I have to do this more than once. I feel like you should get your camera out and take the photos and be doing it rather than filming. Okay, that's me told. <laughs> okay, your turn. As payment for helping me today, See, we're getting that involved. You're enjoying yourself, aren't you? Really? Yes, you like this, aren't you? He's <laughs> got very well acquainted as well. So He's no. not even battered an eyelid at that going on him no. and vibrating all across his back. Do you mind? Is it quite nice? This is, yeah. Oh, we learnt from Monty that the licking and chewing is the um, yes, reduction licking. in adrenaline. Licking and chewing is what we want. Good boy. Chewing is always good. He's going spaced out. I yeah, love that isn't look. he? That's my favourite thing when they space out. Do you love it? So, so yeah, it's quite nice actually. Yeah. Okay. Next, we've had these dressage anywhere rosettes. I'll show you the first one because obviously that's the most important one. So dressage anywhere is um, an online dressage competition. So that if you can't travel your horses or you just want some um, practice, you can film your dressage test and send it in. So we've got the rosettes for those. So that was our next set of products and Theo has been very accommodating <laughs> just waiting to do the ridden bit now oh hey, good chap you've been a very good model haven't you <laughs> Hi guys, I just wanted to very quickly round off this vlog um, because at the end of the shoot on Friday it all got a bit rainy and a bit wet and we were kind of rushing to get things done and I just didn't explain properly and I didn't say everything I needed to say. Firstly, an absolutely massive thank you to Sarah. Uh, Sarah Skillin who runs The Bit UK which is an online magazine and also runs Equi Consulting who I photographed for, um, that was one of the brands we had involved in the shoot. Sarah allowed us to use her um, yard, um, her home and her beautiful horse Theo who was a stand up model. Yeah so she was very very kind in letting us use that and also um, the images from the shoot and a little write up of a kind of like behind the scenes and more details on kind of product photography and that kind of thing um, is going to be going on to the bit online. Really, really kind of Sarah to get involved, allow us to use all her facilities um, and then write about the shoot in, in her magazine. So massive, massive thank you to Sarah. That's really, really kind. I'm going to link to everybody down below. Um, including the bit and Equi Consulting, Sarah's two companies. So if you are interested in any of them, go and have a little look. Um, I'm going to share some of the images from the shoot now so you can kind of see a little bit of how they came out and um, what we achieved. So yeah, take a look.
I just wanted to finish by saying an absolutely ginormous thank you to Kelly Marks and Monty Roberts for having us behind the scenes the other day. It was such a fascinating afternoon. In the interest of full disclosure, I have to confess that I have never really looked into the natural horsemanship side of things too much. I just didn't really know that much about it. Obviously, I'd heard of it all and heard of Monty and Kelly, um, but it's just not something that I've ever really come across too much in my life. So I was really fascinated from the point of view of somebody on the fence. I had no real preconceptions. I wasn't anti it, I wasn't against it, but I also didn't know much about it, to, enough about it to be for it. But do you know what? Somebody who is that lovely and that anti-violence, and they were so welcoming, so friendly, so open and honest, um, and to see everything from behind the scenes from the very beginning when Monty first sees the horses to the afternoon you just can't deny how incredible he is um, and the same with Kelly I mean she did an incredible job with the horse that she was working with and it was just really really fascinating I definitely have so much time for such a um, non-aggressive loving kind way of working so yeah really really fascinating and I think the fact that I was so on the fence about it just n not really having a an opinion either way made it a much more fascinating um, experience and hopefully made a much more um, unbiased vlog huge thank you to them because that was a really really great afternoon and hopefully made for a really good interesting video for you guys as well um sorry it was long but there was just nothing i could cut out it was all so interesting so anyway right i'm gonna go and put this little bit on the end of the vlog that i have already put together upload it and it will be up this evening and thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for loads more kind of equine country horsey videos. Um, there's so much coming up in spring and summer that I am just buzzing about. Uh, if you're new here, please follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, go have a look at my blog. Um, all the links are down below and my dog's crying. Next week, I've got the, a shoot with the incredible Olivia Towers dressage, who is one of my favorite vloggers. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. I'm also going over to Dalesford to meet some faces you will recognize because they've been in my vlogs before. So yeah, stay tuned for those and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching guys.